Welcome to Worship, St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Mountjoy, Pennsylvania. Glad you're tuning us in this day as we lift up our voices in praise, as we worship God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Today is Trinity Sunday, June the 7th, 2020. For our call to worship, selected verses from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us worship together.
shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall, you won't kick down. Lion won't tear down. Coming after me.
Hello, boys and girls. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you're enjoying the warmer weather, the bright sunshine, the longer days as uh, we quickly approach the summer. The very first page of the Bible tells the story of creation, how God created the heaven and the earth, and God created all living things. When you're outside, take a look around you. Everything, the air we breathe, the green grass that we run on, even those stones we, we find, God created them. God created the living animals, too. In our yard, we occasionally have rabbits that, that run through, but they were part of God's creation. God loves us so very much. God loves us and takes delight in each and every one of us. And that's certainly good to know. Sometimes we find ourselves in trouble or or we're mad at someone, or someone is mad at us. But through it all, God continues to love us so very much and take delight in us. And that's something that we can share with our friends, that God loves them. God loves them very much as God loves each and every one of us. My friends, hope you do well. Hope you remember that, that God loves you so very much. Let's pray together. Gracious, loving God, we give you thanks for each of the children of our church, everyone that is watching today. We give you thanks for your amazing love for each one of us, that love that goes with us all of our days. We give you thanks, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our reading for this Sunday is Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. We come to that prayer time. We want to pray for your prayer request. If you have uh, things that we could be praying for throughout the week, please email the church info at stmarks.com and know that we will be praying throughout the week for you and your concerns. Today as we come to prayer we need to remember to keep in prayer our nation. It's been uh, disturbing as we've watched uh, all week long the response in cities uh, around our country and also in different places around the world. As believers in Jesus we continue to fight the sin of racism. God created us in diversity. God blesses our diversity. So let's keep our nation in our prayers. Let's uh, pray. Gracious, loving God, on this day, we give you thanks for the many blessings that you have given to us. As we turn to summer and warmer weather and days of, filled with activities and, and light, we give you thanks and praise for the sky, for the earth, for all living things, Scripture teaches us that you created our world, and you called it good. Help us to be faithful stewards of all that you have created. We give you thanks this day, O oh God, that you are active in our world, in our lives. Active in ways we do not always perceive, comprehend, but you are there working nonetheless. Today we pray for our nation. We're facing some difficult days of unrest in our nation. Help us to, to always be the first to offer a hand of friendship to those that might be different than us. Help us to love all people as you love us. We continue to pray in the midst of a pandemic, as praying for those on the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, the medical team. We pray for those who continue to serve us and 
do so faithfully our police officers and, and this is a difficult time we pray that you keep our our police officers uh, safe we pray for uh, firefighters and, and ambulance uh, crews as they continue to serve us as well as those in the stores and those who come in contact with us we we pray for your protection around them we pray today for those who are sick and those who are struggling. We know there are folks from our congregation awaiting surgery, those recovering from illnesses. We lift up all of those persons, for you are the great physician. We pray for your healing touch to be upon them. We pray for the church, the churches throughout our country they can offer words of comfort and hope in the midst of these difficult days that people will come and will turn to you for guidance, for direction. We pray for our church, St. Mark's Church, that we can continue to be that, that force of light and hope in the Mountjoy community. We pray for all these things this day in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior who teaches us to pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What has sustained us these past months is the assurance that God is with us. God will never abandon us no matter what happens to us. That sense instills a new hope in our lives. Matthew's Gospel begins with the promise of Emmanuel, which means God is with us, and ends with Jesus promising, I am with you always. Knowing that God is with us can be a starting point in our conversations with our friends and neighbors and relatives. One of the distinctive beliefs of United Methodists is the concept of prevenient grace. That God is at work in our lives before we are even aware of God's presence. God is on the move in our lives in this very moment. We experience God's presence in a variety of ways. In the very first page of the Bible, we discover that God is creator of the earth and all living things. In walks, we marvel at the beauty of God's creation. We pause to admire flowers or a beautiful sunset. Out of God's love for us, God sent Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. It is comforting to know that in our not-too-proud moments, that Jesus forgives us of our sins. Jesus suffered and died for us, that we might be forgiven and have eternal life. And then there are those moments when a uh, force seems to take over, propelling us in directions we would rather not engage in. We feel the nudge of the Holy Spirit, giving us words to say when we cannot seem to find the right words. Our Gospel lesson contains the last words of Jesus recorded in Matthew's Gospel. The risen Lord Jesus meets his disciples, now turned apostles, on a mountain in Galilee. You will recall that mountaintops were viewed as places of divine inspiration. Jesus taught his disciples on the mountain at the beginning of his ministry, what we refer to as the Sermon on the Mount, and now offers his final teaching once again on the mountain. On Easter, the women were instructed to find the disciples and invite them to meet Jesus in Galilee. Galilee was where Jesus called them to be his disciples. It always feels good to go home, 
especially after a traumatic experience. In Matthew's telling, it was the first time they encountered the risen Lord, following his death and resurrection. When they saw him, they worshipped him, Matthew notes, but some doubted. Upon encountering Jesus, a fitting response is to worship him. In that moment, they worshipped even though they remained confused. Think about that for a moment. Worship and doubt. They seem to go hand in hand. The word in Greek translated as doubt conveys the sense of standing in two places at the same time or being of two minds. At that moment, the apostles were unsure what to believe. When we are honest with ourselves, we admit that there have been times when we felt uncertain, or confused about matters of faith. Friends, there is nothing wrong with voicing honest doubt. Jesus understands what we are feeling at any given moment. Jesus meets and accepts us where we are, but does not leave us that way. One of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to continue to teach us, to remind us of Jesus' words. We can be effective witnesses when we share our faith with others. Openly, many times when we had doubts, that can help us connect with another person, sharing that there was a time when we did not have it all together, and what we found helpful in making sense of our faith. Jesus commissioned the apostles to go out into all the world as his witnesses, knowing full well that they were not perfect. There on the mountain, Jesus sends out the disciples, even though some doubted. In other words, doubt did not stop, did not prohibit them from being faithful witnesses. The same is true for each and every one of us. On the mountain, Jesus taught them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. The disciples were filled with anxiety, uncertain what would happen to them. In that stress-filled moment, Jesus' words were comforting. They were not to fear earthly rulers, because he was the absolute authority to which they would need to answer. In the uncertainty of our current pandemic, of unrest in many of our cities across the United States and around the world. When we are filled with fear, when life makes little sense, we pause to remember that we belong to Jesus. And Jesus is present with us, always. No one, nothing can separate us from the love of God through Jesus our Lord. While they were on the mountain with Jesus, they would not remain there indefinitely. Jesus commissioned them, sending them, Go, therefore, and make disciples, Jesus told them. They were not to sit around and think about what he taught them, or form a committee to study the matter further. No, they were commanded to go. Go. Jesus was on the move. Jesus expects his followers to be on the move as well. The apostles were instructed to go and make disciples of all nations. We hear that phrase, we think of nations as places far away, where we send missionaries. Disciples were instructed to teach and witness to all people as the Holy Spirit continues to break down human erected barriers. They were to share the good news with people who lived in other places. God sent Jesus into our world for all people. Everyone is included in God's plan of salvation. God blesses our diversity as was evident on the day of Pentecost. 
As the apostles went out, they were instructed to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul reminds us that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. When we baptize individuals, we acknowledge our unity and common faith with other believers. All churches baptize using those same words in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Up until that moment on the mountain, Jesus did all of the teaching. But now the apostles were empowered to go forth and teach people. In fact, they were now able to do everything that Jesus did. With additional people teaching, the message spreads further. One person can only reach a limited number of people. With more people sharing the good news of our faith, more people can be reached. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit empowered the first believers, propelling them into the street to tell others about Jesus, and the church was born. Early days of the church were an exciting time. People were on fire for the Lord, and the church grew in ways no one anticipated. Two are empowered by the Holy Spirit. We follow the promptings of the Spirit, taking us to places and situations we would rather avoid. At those times when we are at a loss for words, the Holy Spirit gives us the right words to say at the right time. The apostles can testify to the truth of that statement. Jesus is on the move and expects us to move with him. Jesus calls us, empowers us, as we daily live out our faith. Those times when it may feel like the, the weight of the world on our shoulders. At those moments when we feel overwhelmed. Remember that we do not go it alone. We have the love and support of each other in our church. We do not have to do it all by ourselves. We rely on one another. Even at those times when we feel we are up against the wall. When what we are called to do seems too difficult. Jesus promises to be with us. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus comes to us, blessing us, even though there might have been some times when we ourselves were filled with doubt, confusion. Jesus empowers us along with the Holy Spirit, promising to be with us always to the end of the age. Jesus is always with us, giving us insight, inspiration, and strength as we live out our faith. Let's pray. Gracious, loving God, we give you thanks for Jesus, his promise to be with us always. We face some challenging, uncertain days, yet we know that you are present with us and never, ever desert us. Help us to continue to be your church, where we live, where we work, in our community. We pray for all these things. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. Dawson Kennedy, and I'm looking forward to helping out people in need or just, yeah, just need help in general. Um, same thing as like last year's mission trip, even though we're not going anywhere, we're staying local, that's fine. We still get to help out other people. So that's what I'm looking forward to, helping out others in need. Hi, my name is Jed Thompson. I'm excited to meet new people in our community and uh, help people out. Hi, Thompson, and I'm looking forward to helping people out in my own community. Hi, I'm Summer, and during this mission trip, I will be excited to meet new people and make new friends. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Sean Haynes here. Just want to say that it's a real blessing for us at REACH to always be able to go out and serve other communities. Um, when we went to Newcastle last year, we had a great experience being able to reach out and help that community, and now we have a really great opportunity to be able 
to help our own community and I'm very blessed and very excited to uh, see what we can do. Thank you all for the support. God bless. Hi, this is Richard from Faith Factory. All's quiet in Fellowship Hall today, but I'm excited to announce that starting Monday, we will be reopening our doors for our summer program. I want to thank you for your continued support and prayer as we move forward in this unknown time. I also ask for continued prayer for God's protection over our staff and our children, just as we will be praying for a God's blessing on a time that we can all come together as a church and worship God as one. Be sure to take care of yourselves and each other. We'll see you soon. Hello, St. Mark's Church family. This is Tammy Ober, and I'm one of the teachers with Faith Factory Learning Center. I am here at the church today with my co-workers, and we are getting our rooms ready for the beginning of summer camp. We are so excited that we're able to open up Faith Factory again for our summer camp on June 8th. I also look forward to the time where we will be all fellowshipping together again in God's presence. Have a great day and God bless you. See you soon. Good morning, everyone at St. Mark's. My name is Jody Truitt. I work for Faith Factory. I have been with St. Mark's for, this will be my 19th year, so I am a lifer here. Um, um, I'm an assistant teacher, and I'd just like to say um, hello to everyone, and um, we're so excited about being open on June the 8th, so if you could please keep us in your prayers. We're excited and we're scared and we're worried, but we're going to be happy to see all the children, so thank you for all the support you give us, and um, hope we see you. Bye-bye.
thank you for tuning us in this day, for worshiping with us at St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Mount Joy, Pennsylvania. I want to alert everybody to next Sunday, June the 14th, we'll be trying a live service in our parking lot beginning at 9 o'clock. You may start arriving at 8.30. The service will be broadcast over radio for you. Uh, we will also be celebrating communion that day. We'll have packets of bread and and, and a cup for everybody as they enter the parking lot. But if you feel more comfortable bringing some bread or some grape juice from home, you may do so as well as we celebrate together. That's next Sunday, June the 14th. I want to thank you once again for your faithfulness, your example, as you continue with your offerings to the church in this time. The ministry of the church continues. It just looks a little different when we're unable to physically meet. But thank you so much for your faithfulness. Finally, I want to thank everybody who put this service together and participated. God bless all of you. For our benediction today, I thought I would use our epistle lesson from Paul to the Corinthians, the second Corinthians, the very end, often used as a uh, benediction. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. God bless you.